What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Heavy Wrench. Thanks for tuning in today. I appreciate it as always. Um, trying to get back in the swing of things here with uh, videos. So we're, today we have a John Deere 4600 with a 460 loader I believe is what it was. Have a curl cylinder, diagnosis cylinder, seal kit being bad. Have the seal kit now. We're going to get this thing taken apart and I'll show you what I do and how it comes apart. So. Stay tuned for that. Uh, hit that like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff, and look out for some good, hopefully some more good content coming your way. So we're gonna get back into this. <laughs> Had a little bit of a, a break there in content for a while. It's been uh, busy, 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 but trying to make time for, for everything else too. Um, so stay tuned, we're gonna hit this up. All right, John Deere cylinder, we got our John Deere seal kit here. Uh, we're definitely going to need our seal kit to remove this cylinder because this is a style that requires a little orange slip ring to take it apart and that comes with your seal kit. So these are the two seal kits that we have and we're going to um, see what we got. We're going to disassemble the cylinder. First things first, there's a snap ring right here. The snap ring has to come off. This in here. Snap ring comes off, right? Next thing is, so we're going to end up having to pound in the gland. But first, always, always, always clean out that dirt that's in there. Now, I use a pipe vise on some of these smaller cylinders, it works pretty well. Um, I have a larger one that I could use, but this one seems to fit in there nicely. And I don't grab the barrel, I try to grab the uh, end of it. We got it good and flushed with the brake clean. I'm going to grab some air. Alright, got the blow gun. We're going to get in here. That will give us our best chance. Now, we're going to get some penetrating oil. Almost forgot about that. This stuff here is called Nut Z Lube. And it's pretty good. So we're going to coat that down a little bit. Now we're going to take our hammer. Sorry about stepping in front of the camera there. And we're going to start tapping in slowly. Oh yeah, she's going nicely. I really like these stamp-on hammers with the rubber that protrudes. Because now you're just having your rubber stick out on there. This one here was a replacement. So this is a pretty cool, uh, it's a MPBS-12A. Uh, it's just a big striking screwdriver. Works pretty good. We're going to hit here. And we're going to keep going in until we see a little notch. Still don't see the notch. This is snapping. Okay, I can start to see a little bit of the notch. You can see there's some rust in there. So we're gonna get the blow gun. Blow that rust out of there. If we can. Penetrating oil is kind of important there. Yep, and I can start to see the, the dip in that. You don't want to go too far though, that's the, that's the other thing. If you go too far, sometimes you'll cover up this, this port here. I'll loosen this up real quick and spin it for you. So you see how that cylinder, that head gland goes into here? Sometimes that makes it awful tough to, uh, to get out. So we're going to spray this with some more lube. It's definitely important to do that because if not, it will be bad. So, um, I don't know. I'll show you that, that lip once we get um, 
cylinder apart. So, oh, okay. Open up your seal kit. There's two seal kits usually for these. One for the uh, rod and one for the piston and, and head ground. So the, the, the removal tool looks just like this. And John Deere's been doing this a lot lately. So I don't know if you can see that or not. Hopefully you can. Yep, you can see that. Lights shining in. So there's a, there's a taper. See how the taper goes that way? That's the way that goes towards that goes inside, okay? So, we're gonna take that, and we're gonna slide that in to that little groove that's in there. And like I said, I don't like going in too awful far, just enough to get that in place. And maybe I need to go a little further. Yep, looks like you gotta go a little bit further. Here. Yep, definitely gotta go further. So, get this tapped in and it shouldn't go in too awful hard. There it is. I see it now. There we go. Now we're in there. Far enough. It's probably. This one was probably a half inch in, to tell you the truth. And they're all different by a little bit, you know. But here's the tricky part, is getting this wound in there. So you can see how it, that orange ring will stay in there. And what it is, is, there's a snap ring on the inside of that cylinder that this compresses from the inside so you want to make sure you get it seated all the way around and sometimes it's a pain right there at the end but you definitely want to get all of it in there okay now we're going to take this I have drained the cylinder completely well as completely as you can right and now we're going to use the cylinder itself as its own slide hammer to pop out that head gland. Well, I guess not because the bench moves. So we're just tapping. I don't know if you can see where I'm tapping. Yeah, you kind of can. Just tapping on the end here. Leave that up there. Okay. And there is our head gland and piston assembly. So that's the snap ring right there that you're compressing with that orange piece. I don't know if you can see that orange piece or not. Probably not. Get you a little closer here. So we're going to set this it's the orange ring that you can see right here that's in there. And that compresses that compresses this snap ring. And that's where the snap ring sits when it's all the way out. So the snap ring holds it here. The outer snap ring holds it here. The inner snap ring holds it here. And that's what holds the head gland in place. Um, we can already see what happened to the cylinder here? Oh, it's probably way too close. Let's see if we can see that O-ring or not. It's already, it's just mangled. It's missing part of it, that seal. I'm going to have to take that off. I'll show you. That's what the drift was caused right there. That piston. So it looks like it was two-piece. Um, with that reseal. So we're going to reseal the whole cylinder. We're going to pull this nut off. Pull the head gland off and go from there. So let's get after it. Nice part about this vise is it's on a um, it's on a pipe that goes on the side of the bench, so I can actually just turn it down, let everything drain out. With a short cylinder like this, it's perfect. Now I can take 
this vise and uh, put the cylinder head in there. and a sixteenth maybe. Let's go grab a stop. Alright. Well I was wrong, it's inch and an eighth. So we're gonna take our Milwaukee, which is dialed up on number three. We're gonna pop that nut off. Center right there. Piston off. I like to set the piston the way it comes off. Um Kind of just because, whatever, now our head gland comes off. We're going to leave this snap ring on here because if you forget that, you got to take it all back apart. So here's our actual head gland. We're going to reseal this, reseal the piston, and we'll be on our way. So let's uh, get that done. All right. We're going to clean it first. We're going to clean it. Empty. I guess we we'll have to. So you have a small O ring here. I don't know if you can see that or not. I guess we'll spin it this way. Small O ring here, the snap ring, a backup ring, an O ring. Inside here you have a wiper seal, and then you have your inner seal, and that's uh, all that's in there, really. So we're going to get this uh, apart. I got a special little uh, tool that I used. I actually sent it to Warren on Western Truck and Tractor there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll show you what it looks like and we'll get it, get it going. So I'll be right back with that punch and then we'll get some stuff cleaned up. First things first, we're going to get this part out right here. This is that round nose cape chisel. It's a uh, P. PC 12B. I really like it for these because you can get right into. Is that the right seal? Am I looking at that right or is that just a pop in seal? You look at the new seal kit here. It might not even be a hard seal, it might be a soft seal. Well, we got two. We got a soft seal style and a hard seal style. Let's try taking it out as a soft seal first. Um, we'll pick like this. We're going to try it that way. Yep, this one doesn't need that. It's a soft seal style wiper. So there's your wiper. That's out. Hold one over there. The inner one down here. Just dig in. Pop it out. And I try to set them like that in order. And then uh, we're going to pop these outer ones off. Set them over there too, and then this little baby O-ring, which this one is just to stop the dirt and rust from uh, getting back on the snap ring. So there's that. It's all disassembled. Now we just got to clean it up. So I'm gonna um, change my, blow this off some brake clean, change it up. I'm gonna also clean the piston once we get ready for that. So I'm going to clean this up real quick. Some brake clean, let me grab that. That. Get the piston off here real quick. Get that all clean-ish. So I'm just doing a little scrubbing. Okay, all right. Okay, that's cleaned off. That's cleaned off. Let's get a rag. Let me get a rag. Dang it. Always forgetting something. Okay, now we got a rag. We're going to wipe the piston off here. The rest of the way, make sure she's spotless. We're going to wrap that up in the rag the way it come off. So that's clean. Now we're going to grab a new rag and we're going to clean up the uh, head gland here because there's definitely always some dirt, always some stuff on this. So 
make sure we get her good and clean. In here, there's part of the seal that's blue. I want to try to get that off so we. It might be grease actually from the installation of it. And sometimes you, you're better off just taking your pick and running down the edge like this, you know, just to get her cleaned up a little bit. Making sure that all that rust that's up in here is out of there. I'm going to grab some uh, Scotch Brite though, I think, for that real quick. Same with inside this wiper. I try to do the edges where it looks rusty with the pick. That way we're all set. You can still see me or not. I can't see nothing because of the sunlight coming in. Yeah, looking good there. I'm gonna grab some Scotch Brite real quick and get this cleaned up. Okay. Bring a piece of Scotch Brite. I generally tear a little corner off like that. Now we're gonna get inside that groove and just kind of go around a few times, just like that. Sometimes I use a red, sometimes gray, sometimes green, whatever. Um, something like this it doesn't really matter too much as long as you're getting that rust out of there. I'll do the same thing here. New little piece, put it here. This one needs the most, that's why I grabbed the green. Green's the coarsest uh, scotch Brite, And I knew I had some rust here. So we're taking care of that. Getting that cleaned up. And what we'll do is we'll put some grease in there. That way it doesn't rust again. Because sometimes you just can't get these apart when they rust like that kind of horrible so if you stop it now you're way better off and then today I'm going out to work on a tractor um, I got a customer stopping by to pick up a wood chipper here about I don't know, another half hour 45 minutes it should be here hoping to get the cylinder done by then and uh, yeah, we can, uh, I'm going to go out and work on a, I believe it's a 1085 Massey. Not really sure. I ordered the parts. They're here. But I don't think I'll be able to video that one. Which has been kind of the case for some other stuff too. Just not time and then, you know, depending on the customer and stuff. So that's, uh, that's, that's pretty clean. You can see I got most of it off there, so we're gonna do a little bit in here. Where that wiper seal is. Okay. Now we're all clean. Ready to go back together. Okay. Okay, we're going to start with the inside seals, which right here's your rod seals. And the gland seals. So, this is for your head gland here. I don't know why deer does that, but so what you want to do. Is there just, I'll grab that little tool real quick. Hold on. So this kit here, Seal Twister Tool Set, KingKitUSA.com. I don't know. I bought it off Amazon. It uh, comes with these little seal twisters. What you want to do is you want to make that seal look like a kidney bean. And sometimes I use these because they work. And other times this works pretty good. So we're going to try this one. Slide it on, I think, like this. I don't know. It's been 
it, it always screws me up every time I try to try to use them but yep that's the right way and now see how it looks like the kidney bean like that when you hold it straight now that allows you to get down in there and put the seal in straighten it out and then as you come out you can uh, I don't know if you can see that or not it flops right into place and makes it a nice seal now this one up here you can probably do the same thing but I think I'm just gonna put it in like this maybe so this one being at the top I can do it with my fingers see how it's a kidney bean shape and then grab the pick don't touch it with the point and then let it flop out that's done now we're gonna get in our other kit our other seal kit so if it had the metal one that would be the one you use they make them kind of universal now the seal kits for some reason but you need both of them to do the whole cylinder. So, it looks like we don't have the right piston kit. We might. I'll have to see because that other o ring looked different. But we will see here. Let's get this one on first. There's that one on and then the backup ring went this way and then we had an o-ring Maybe they updated that seal too. How thick was that O-ring and what size was it? Let's check it out here. That was this blue one probably because that looks like it fits right. Okay. Slide that in. Slide that over. There is our resealed head gland. We'll set that off to the side. Now we have two different styles of piston seals there, which is kind of concerning. Because it looks like we had an O-ring, and then we had an outer wiper seal that was rubber. So, this side went to the rod, so we're going to go on this side and put an N, because it's aluminum piston, and we're going to write nut on that side, because the nut goes on that side. So this is the rod side. Okay. But, looks like it was the bigger O-ring. Yep. And it looks like the width is the difference. See how that width doesn't really fill that gap? This one fills the gap. Okay, this is where it gets tricky because this one is a hard seal. So you kind of got to stretch it nice and even. So you don't tear it. And sometimes you can just kind of work it around. We're getting closer. These pistons, these piston seals are always a pain in the butt. So we're going to take our. 90 degree pick here. I keep stretching it. Nope, that ain't gonna work. So what I do, I'll show you here in a second. Hold on. Be right back. Okay, we got our. I went over and brewed some coffee, hot water here, so that should warm it up. Oh man, kind of got. Had a customer show up, so it kind of got cold on me a little bit, but the old Keurig to the rescue. Put it in the Keurig, it got it uh, a little warm. 
hopefully it stretches. Might have to redo it here. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing or not here. A little closer. Ouch. You always poke yourself every time, right? Now we'll get this out. And we'll straighten it. Sometimes you distort it a little bit, but it'll come back. It's the only problem with them hard seals is getting them to, once you stretch them, to get them to come back straight. But that looks good. That will work. So, now what I always use is engine assembly lube. I try to use that because it works good. Um, I'll put it on the outside here, inside here. Wipe it around, then I'll get you guys over to where we put it on here. But the engine assembly lube, this, I should probably do this last, but on the outside here, I'll do it again. But now, we'll move you guys over get under. Now this part here, just kind of slide it on, leave it up there. We got our piston. I wrote nut on that side, so that's the side of the nut. Okay, there's that. Pick up the nut. Put the nut on. There was no Loctite on this one, so I'm going to grab a little bit of Loctite, clean them threads, and do it up. So hold on one second. All right, where did I put that Loctite at? I just had it and I had a phone call. Yada yada, all that good stuff, here's the Loctite. So I've been, you probably can't hear me at all, because we're, uh, we're not really there. So I've been uh, using this uh, Permatex Thread Locker Gel. It's been pretty good. Now I'm just putting a little bit on here, right? We don't need to go crazy with the Loctite on a cylinder. It didn't have Loctite before, it has Loctite now. So, the nut, the nut, the nut, the nut. Where'd I put it? That's what happens when you get a phone call. We're gonna put this on here. And then we're gonna tighten it up. The impact took it off pretty easy, so we're gonna put it right back on with that impact. goes. Now we get to assemble our cylinder. So I'm going to back you guys up. The next thing we got to do is uh, get our orange uh, snap ring retainer. Now you can save these and reuse them. I do have some that I've saved um, for the instance where you really just want to get that cylinder apart. Um, trim them down, make them fit, yada yada. But it's always nice to have the right one. So, we're going to pop this out, that's key. Um, we're going to clean out our end band here. And there's that little bit of rust still uh, still in that end. There's that piece of scotch right at. We're going to clean up this too. That'll just help everything out and uh, make everything slide a little smoother. We're not doing much except for this uh, rust right here. Because right. rust builds rust, right? Some guys will use anti-seize. I don't really like anti-seize in the end of the uh, in the end of it like that because I don't want to introduce anything crazy to our uh, 
um, to our system, you know. That's the biggest thing for me. Now I'll take some assembly engine assembly lube. I like it because it just it'll mix with the oil and uh, it'll be okay. And I'll put it all around that that end piece there. Some guys use regular grease. I've used regular grease in the past. It does work well. Um, in an assembly loop though, it seems to just work good as well. So, got our piston really good and cleaned up. Now we're going to take our piston and we're going to make sure we go in nice and smooth. And we'll make sure that stays straight around there. So we're going to give it a little twist as we go in. I like twisting as, as we go in. A little tap. See it popped out right there. I just don't want it to pop out. We're going to take our, take our piece here and we're going to go around it and make sure we, we sit square. So it's not really square right now. So I'm going to do that and I'll get right back with you. Well I forgot to hit record when I when I put that in there but I tapped it in and now the biggest thing is once we get it in we want to make sure we don't see any of that seal on the inside of that which we don't. So we're good. We're going to tap in the rest of the way. Alright. Okay. Now here comes the uh, another crucial part. We're gonna get this right here. We're gonna slide this in, and this is the this is the next toughest part of rebuilding the cylinder. So now we're gonna tap this in. The problem is gonna be is a snap ring. We gotta compress it in the in the groove. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. So I'll show you kind of what I do here. Sometimes it takes two people, sometimes it doesn't. But whatever. So you get it in the right spot where it kind of holds in. And then uh, you can kind of take your flat screwdriver and the deal here and hold it in there. Hold it in there, and then a couple taps that way, and then we'll start to get it going in, and then that popped in, make sure your bottom's in, and now we can go in just a little bit more, but here's the tough part, you got to push, push, and tap. I have used hose clamps before, I've used piston ring compressors before, and nothing seems to be that wonderful, if that makes sense. I've used hose clamps, zip ties, everything. But if you can just get it pinched with your fingers there a little bit, it tends to get you in. And this one, we might have to use a hose clamp or something. Yep, we'll use a hose clamp. We'll get that done. Um, I don't mind using piston ring compressors, but at the end of the day, I'd really not I'd rather not use them. Space on 
we're going to try to use a heavy zip tie this time. What you can do is just tighten the zip tie and then as you go, push the zip tie, pop, pop out on it just a little bit. And then slide the zip tie forward as far as you can. And like I said, everybody's kind of different when it comes to this, but it seems to work sometimes for me, sometimes it doesn't. So that gives you a little bit of a, a slot to get it in and hold it tight and then I try to push and tap all at the same time the zip tie is kind of working not really though nice if you could just At the back of the tie off. Pop it back out just a little bit. Get around that uh, snap ring. on my hands Pop out. and this is why it's tough so look the old time welder just showed up y'all give me a hand Putting the snap ring in. Won't take long. No, I want my help. No, I want his help. Yep, I need his help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think he'd, you think he'd be feel special because I need his help. Mm -hmm. There you go. There's a hammer. Are you gonna tap about that much, that hard, when I hold this snap ring in? Have a different screwdriver. Two people is the best way to do this. It is. So you hold there with one screwdriver, push there with the other, and then you tap, tap, tap until it starts to go in and to stop. Make sure we're all the way up there, all the way up there. Now we're going to tap some more. There it goes, see? Now it's starting to go in. Keep going. Alright, now we're in. Now you go in until you hear it. You'll hear it click. Or you'll feel it click. Now we're probably past that point. Now when we pull out on our cylinder here, It comes out, but we double check it by slamming a couple of times. Did you loosen that on me or what? No. Yeah. I figured you loosened it on me. It makes sense, the old time welder. There it goes. Now we make sure the head gland doesn't come out. Now we can cut that off and uh, Push that in, our snap ring goes on next, the last thing 
No snap ring. All right, snap rings on. Cylinder is rebuilt. I had a couple of caps over here. Anyway, we're gonna clean it up, cap, put the caps on, and uh, we'll be good to go. And we'll go out and install this probably tomorrow. So, that should be it. We'll get the old time Walder in here real quick so you can say hi to everybody. See him in the background. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. That's how we do the cylinder. And I do the cylinder. That, oh, yeah. Seeing how he did most of it. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Um, check us out on Saturday night's live stream. Um, hopefully, this comes out this week. We'll be doing a live stream with a tool dealer. So, that should be interesting. Anyway. We'll have a wife check it out, too. Stay tuned. We'll talk to you soon. Some days. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Heavy Wrench. Today we're reselling. Rese blah, blah, blah.